Hey folks, welcome to our first lesson. This is just an introductory tutorial. It's not going to take very long. I just want to give you um, some basics of what a class like this requires and, and what it's all about and um, a very popular question I'm always getting every time I teach a class like this is what sort of thesis statement I look for. So I do have an example for you and then of course an overview. So this is uh, this class is called Critical Thinking and Literary Analysis. And uh, before we get started on the fiction unit specifically, I do want to just uh, go over how you are supposed to be reading these texts because a lot of them, you know, they're going to be short stories. I mean, some of them are nonfiction, but most of them are fiction. We are going to be, be starting with the fiction unit. And there's really three ways that you should be reading text. The first way here is text to self. We all know how to do this. Um, we, since we live our own experience, since, you know, we are the center of our own universe in a way, symbolically, um, we know how to relate things to ourselves. So basically, whenever you're reading text, you're trying to apply it to your own life. And this kind of comes naturally, but in a class like this, I ask you to be a little bit more conscientious and a little bit more uh, aware whenever you are making those connections. The second way, which is more difficult, is text to text. So we read these stories, right? But then, of course, these stories might have uh, similar themes. The characters might have qualities that are similar to one another, um, or they might be entirely different. Um, they might share such a subtle similarity or, or such a major difference. And in order for us to really appreciate understanding the, understand these texts, we do have to make connections. So this part, I think that's what we're go going to be using uh, doing for the majority of our activities. So all of these discussions that I have created are really, a lot of them, yeah, include text to self, but most of them are going to be text to text connections that we practice. And finally, if you can do this, then um, I think that's amazing. I think this is a struggle for everyone, which is you're reading a text and you are able to apply the text to a broader uh, reality. So when, when I say text to the world, it really means, you know, uh, some type of cultural connection, social connection, um, historical connection. You know, these texts, they were written uh, during a certain time period. So even putting them in context and then being able to understand the society at that time versus the society today, that would be a text to the world interpretation. And these are the three methods that we will be using when we do read the texts in our book. Um, and I do think it does get harder and harder. You know, text to self is a little easier. I do think text to text and text to the world require some critical thinking on our part. All right, so why is all this important? Why is it important to be reading text in this way? Why can't we just read to enjoy what it is we're reading? Well, uh, the reality is, um, if we're talking about English class, we're talking about advanced composition, we're reading to understand and appreciate. So when, when we do read for uh, the sake of analysis, we're really trying to understand a deeper meaning in the text. And we are also trying to find the significance behind a text. Um, if, a, if a text is pointless, then why read it? Why spend time on it? So um, it is, it, the point is, the goal is to acquire a deeper understanding and appreciation for the text. Now there's a few steps that we take to be really good um, critical readers and this is to help our close reading skills. Number one step, and this is just my advice on how you should be reading these texts and what you should be doing. Number one, you really should annotate. I don't know if you guys are in the habit of taking notes as you read. I 
always have. And um, th this is basically, you know, well, it's not mine. It's just a sample. But this is basically what I recommend. Whenever you are reading a, a short story or poem or whatever else, you know, an essay, you should be marking what your reactions, what your interpretations, what your confusion is all about. So um, the sample on the right here, look at the, the volume of, of notes this student take, it took. Um, there's some definitions here, like uh, the student defined the word trodden, um, the student defined the word diverged, but then there were also reactions to the poem. Wow, I thought the opposite. And then there's an amen at the bottom here. It's just, it's nice. You see the, the student's thought process as he or she was reading the poem. So uh, one way, you know, you're like, oh, this looks like a major waste of time. You might be wondering that. And, and I don't blame you for wondering that. But it's not a waste of time. It really isn't because it helps you retain the information. And when you retain the information, your memory does this amazing thing where later on, let's say you're sitting down to write your paper, suddenly uh, um, this familiar feeling comes into your head. You're like, hold on, I've read this before. I can make this connection. You go back to the text and you find it. That's how it works with me. And that's how it works with most people, which is why, you know, annotations work really, really well. Number two, you always have to look up what you don't know. You guys, um, I'm constantly asking Siri <laughs> for help. And it, that's amazing, I think, because we live in a time period where we do have technology right at our fingertips. So imagine how spoiled and how privileged we are that we get that. So I, I think um, <clears throat> asking you to look up what you don't know uh, doesn't require any real physical activity like driving to the library and checking out a dictionary and, and looking up words. Um, I just think, you know, you should have a dictionary app. Um, you should have a trustworthy encyclopedia. A lot of people use Wikipedia. Wikipedia is solid. Um, there were some mistakes that Wikipedia made in the past. But one thing about uh, an online site like that is, you know, they're able to correct their mistakes and they have so I don't mind Wikipedia either and then of course every time you are looking up references this is called illusion so it's a reference to people places events we're talking about historical events you know like it could be biblical events those are all illusions so um, whenever you're reading these stories you're gonna come across so many of these and it's your responsibility to look them up sometimes I will pinpoint the important ones but please don't rely on me if something's unfamiliar to you look it up number three you should also know what the context is. Um, I realize more and more, especially nowadays, every time I'm, I'm watching the news, and it's um, just to give an example, the news media sometimes takes things out of context. Like a public figure might make a comment, and suddenly the news media will twist it and make it seem like they meant this when they didn't exactly say it like that. So understanding spoken context as well as written context is very important. So what I mean by that, and this is a little test you should apply, try to answer these questions. So anytime there's a time period that is relevant in a story, try to fill in the blank, like the who, the what, when, where, sometimes even the why and the how. Um, this will help you understand you know, what the author's circumstances were, what the author's, um, <clears throat> not just circumstances, but society and also culture might have been um, during that time. So again, that goes hand in hand with number two, which is look up what you don't know, and it'll help you understand the context a little bit more. Um, don't take things out of context. Like if, if a 
um, I don't know, if a piece of uh, literature was written back in, in the days when women were not allowed to vote, you know, don't get personally offended by that. By that. That's just the context of the story, you know, that, that's just understanding the story on a deeper level. All right, this is also a nice little test. Are you able to summarize what you read? Are you able to paraphrase direct lines from the reading? If you can do those things, then you definitely have good close reading skills. So the summary, just to use an analogy of a forest, is basically looking at the forest from the bird's eye view. When you look at a forest from a bird's eye view, you're able to see the large expanse of the forest. You're probably going to be able to see a whole lot of green. You'll see the top of the trees, but you will not be able to see the details that are inside of the forest. So that's the analogy I would like to take um, and use. So for a summary, think of it like this. Give an overview of the story. What was it about? You know, what was it? If you can put it in your own words, chances are you understood it. The paraphrase. Now, going back to my analogy, it's like entering a forest. Now, look, when you enter a forest, you will be able to see the grass. You'll be able to see the bark of the trees. You might even be able to see the little creatures that live in here. Um, if you get close enough, you might see an ant crawling up the bark. So th this level of detail can only happen with paraphrasing. And that's, that's really the difference that I would like to um, use. That a summary gives a general overview, while a paraphrase gives a specific line by line interpretation. One important rule to remember in a paraphrase is you cannot, if you are trying to paraphrase a story or a, a section or a line from the story, you cannot contaminate that story. You cannot contaminate the meaning, which means that your paraphrase should be a direct translation. It should not have your opinions or interpretations in there. And finally, what is a thesis in a class like this? Because if this is, you know, a, lot, a whole lot of literary analysis, we're writing about literature, what's a sample thesis look like? So here's um, my, inter uh, first of all, my definition. And I have two examples for you guys. So first of all, a thesis, I define it as a claim and a rationale. That's technically what it is. You know, you make a claim, as in you take a position, and then you have a reason for your position. Now, if you're straight out of high school, you might have three reasons, because uh, a lot of high school students are taught the five paragraph method. Um, I don't teach that in my class, because I don't think that there's a certain number of reasons you should have. Your entire paper might be focused on one rationale. It might have four rationales. It might have six. So it really depends, you know? So the claim, that's your position, that's your opinion, that's your stance. Here's a sample claim. The story, Where Are You Going, Where Have You Been, by Joyce Carol Oates, depicts the theme of teenage rebellion gone wrong. Now, this is one writer's interpretation of the theme. Because if the teacher asks what's the theme, this is one writer's answer to that question. Um, same with this one. Jamaica Kincaid's girl shows a negative side to gender roles for women. Again, this is the position. Um, this is the position the writer will be arguing. Of course, can somebody dispute this position? Sure, why not? They could argue the positive side. Now, here are the rationales. The story, Where Are You Going, Where Have You Been, by Joyce Carol Oates, depicts the theme of teenage rebellion gone wrong through the frequent use of pop culture motifs, such as music and clothing. And that is the main rationale. It actually has two rationales. I will be exploring the motif of music and the motif of clothing. Jamaica Kincaid's girl shows a negative side to gender roles for women because of both the ideals they must meet and the imperfections they are expected to avoid. Again, two rationales, one being the ideals they have to meet, the second being the imperfections they should avoid. This is just a simple thesis, but I did want to give you guys a sample. 
and that's it that's my intro to English 102 and our next unit our fiction unit will have more details following